Thank you all for being here. Um, this is really, really awesome to have this room packed out. I, uh, it's my first time here at DevConf in Brno and my first time speaking. So a big thank you to you guys and a big thank you to the organizers. Today, we're going to be talking about and demoing the experience of using Podman Desktop to work with containers and to make your life easier as a developer, a sysadmin, or anyone who enjoys working with containers and taking your applications and deploying them to Kubernetes environments. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to learn more, we've got a longer session uh, at 1445 in room D206. And also, we're going to be talking about working with generative AI in containers, a part of the new Podman AI Lab. Um, and super happy to have you here. So I'm Cedric. I'm a developer advocate. I work on developer tooling and AI. And as you've seen probably in the abstract, uh, we're going to be going through and using the amazing power of Podman brought to you by Matthew and Dan and the entire containers team at Red Hat. Uh, to work with containers from your source code, to uh, work with pods and also Docker Compose, uh, and translate that and deploy that to a variety of Kubernetes environments like Kind, Minikube, uh, and OpenShift Local, uh, as well as managed services uh, and, and uh, experiences and, and environments such as uh, OpenShift uh, with the developer sandbox that you can do at home completely for free. Uh, this is a free OpenShift cluster, and we're going to show this whole demo with Podman Desktop. So, woohoo! Now, these are the awesome seals that are the mascots of the Podman and the Podman Desktop project. Um, a group of seals is known as a pod, so that's where the name Podman comes from, Pod Manager. Uh, and I'm not from here, but this is my interpretation of um, uh, the local area, you know, some kebabs, some beer, and a tiny airport that only serves Ryanair uh, and Smart Wings. <laughs> Uh, you know, and uh, how many of us here are already using Podman? Woo! And then keep your hand raised if you're using Podman Desktop. Okay, okay. By the end of this session, by the end of the conference, it's going to be 100%. So um, the only two things you have to know about Podman is that first, it's a fast and light container engine for working with images, containers, volumes, registries, and more because of its architecture. So instead of having a background service that's managing containers, Podman has a fork exec arc. Uh, architecture where the child process then becomes the container and because of that since 1.0 of Podman five years ago uh, we're able to run by default containers in a rootless fashion so that means we don't have to have any elevated privileges really good for large enterprises that want to use and take advantage of container technology it's also open source if you go to github slash containers you can view all of the different projects here submit an issue submit a PR and it's compatible with the OCI standard for images volumes containers uh, and docker compose through the Compose spec that we'll take a look at today. Um, having Podman on your machine is awesome as a CLI, first off, because you can build images from your source code, right? You can uh, push them to registries, run those containers, SSH into them to debug them. Uh, you can work with Kubernetes, as we'll see, uh, to play Kubernetes YAML, uh, but also generate it from the pods and uh, uh, from Podman itself. Um, but what we actually want to do is uh, show you why Podman uh, Desktop came about because uh, building upon the strengths of Podman as a container engine, we noticed there's a new issue, which is the discrepancies and the uh, imp the the uh, kind of difficulties in moving from your local development environment where you're building, testing, uh, and working on your code to where you're actually deploying your applications in production on a Kubernetes cluster. There's differences in the compute resources that we have. There's differences in how we deploy our applications. Uh, and there's complexity from not only a skills gap of, say, those who are experts on Kubernetes, but a disconnect between dev and ops. And I kind of want to show this uh, in this adoption barrier to moving to Kubernetes. So let's say I'm a developer, and I'm working in VS Code, and I'm in my inner loop. I might be working with base images with little to no security or CVEs from, say, Docker Hub. And I'm working in Docker Compose, which is a really good way to abstract our application. Uh, but moving that to Kubernetes is kind of a dead end. Uh, and on the other hand, when I give my, ab my uh, artifact to an operations team, they have their own curated base images. They're working in a rootless fashion for Kubernetes. Uh, and they're working with Kubernetes YAML that I, as a developer, might not have any idea how to work with. Uh, and this is what we see as the adoption barrier and this wall of discrepancies in working with containers and Kubernetes. And we're reproducing those uh, uh, production environment issues on my local machine can be a big hassle. But there's a solution with Podman Desktop, as I showed before. Uh, you can not only work with containers and pods locally, uh, but you have a streamlined way to deploy to local Kubernetes environments, to test, to experiment, 
and deploy directly to a Kubernetes con uh, context based on your kube config. Um, so we're going to take a look and demo Podman Desktop today. Uh, it not only installs and configures Podman Desktop or the Podman machine if you're on Windows and Mac, but you can build images, run containers, SSH into them, all of these cool things that we do every day, uh, but you don't have to memorize the commands for. There's enterprise features, and you can bridge to your remote clusters, as I said before, based on your kube config. And it's on a really cool stack. So we're working with Electron and Svelte here for Windows, Mac, and of course, containers are Linux. And we're going to take a look at the really cool extensions here today, too. And we're at DevConf. This is the open source conference. So Podman Desktop, of course, is free, open, and extensible. There's no enterprise licensing. You can go to the repository, submit an issue, or a PR. Now, who's ready for a live demo? <laughs> Woo! OK. So Podman Desktop, you can visit it and download it there. Um, or go to the website, podman.io or podman-desktop.io. But you can also check out the repository. Feel free to give it a star. And let's go ahead and hop in and show you the experience of working with Podman Desktop. So I've already set up uh, Podman Desktop on my machine, uh, configured my Podman machine to run these containers. Uh, and you're going to see there's a learning center for getting started with containers for any type of language and framework. Um, and we have the ability to not only work with container images, pull them down from registries, or build them from the UI. We can run those containers. Uh, and we have a lot of really cool extensions, for example, working with AI or working with bootable containers, as we just talked about in the keynote. Shout out Dan and the team. So uh, it sets up Podman, and we have extensions for Minikube, Kind, Compose. Uh, and I'll go ahead and start off by showing you the example application that I want you to see today that we're working with. So uh, any Python developers in here? OK, sweet. So we've got a, a, a simple Python Flask application. Don't worry about the logic. Essentially, we're just going to refresh the page, and the hit counter will increment. Uh, we're also connected to a Redis instance here based on this app server environment variable. Um, and of course, I could just run this here with a Flask run. Um, but you're going to notice when I actually go to, um, ooh, let's see if I can click on this. When I go to visit the page, uh, well, what's going to happen, right? We don't have a connection to Redis. I don't have Redis on my machine. This is a great use case for containers, right? To spin up a, a database, to spin up our application. Uh, and so what we're going to go ahead and do is um, go ahead and containerize this application and also run a containerized version of Redis. Uh, we've got a multi-stage Docker file here to uh, start from the universal base image for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, build our application, create a non-root user, uh, and then copy that into a scratch image to then copy in our app and run an entry point as well as expose a port. This entry point is really cool because when we're working with containers traditionally, uh, we need to think about ports or IP addresses in order to connect containers and that, net that networking process. But when we're actually working in pods, right, they talk to each other on localhost. So we'll show the difference in going between those two. Uh, and I'll go ahead and start off from Podman Desktop. So I could pull from a variety of different registries that I could connect to. Uh, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is build from this container file. <coughs> container file. Um, and we're just going to call this Python app. So we can select our architecture, but all of those steps that we showed in the Docker file uh, are going to be ran here, and the image will be tagged locally to our registry. That's that easy to essentially build a container image from a container file here. Um, and what I've also gone ahead and done is we can see the container here. We could edit it and tag it to our specific registry. Uh, if we have a mini cube or kind uh, cluster, we could push it to that registry locally. Um, but what I've gone ahead and done is already tagged these images. Um, so we've got a back end and a front end that I want to show you here. The back end uh, is this uh, Redis instance, but also built on the UBI with the same security uh, and certifications that you have uh, with running Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So when I go ahead and go and start this Redis instance, we've got a lot of different options that I would be familiar with using in the terminal. But now we can see it all visually, such as working with volumes, port mapping, environment variables, uh, the ability to restart a container if it quits, um, the ability to work with networking, security, and all of that. So I'll go ahead and start this container. And just like that, we've got a Redis instance working. We can see the logs here go into the terminal. 
uh, see a Kubernetes manifest for this pod and inspect this application. And what's cool, and I'm going to show you this manually, is that I can just pull the local IP address of this application uh, so that I can plug it in as a host for the Python application. So I'll come back here and we'll go ahead and run this front end. So this is the same application that I have here, but I tagged it, pushed it to a registry. I'm going to call it Python. Um, you'll notice that port 5000 on a Mac is used for airdrop, so it automatically reroutes the port mapping here. And I'll add in a line to the host file for Redis. And so just like this, uh, we're going to start. We have the Redis container started, and we have the Python conta container started. And we've got our running application now connected to a Redis instance, so there's no error and we can refresh it. So that's starting multiple containers and building images. I also want to show how many of us are working with Docker Compose. OK, so we've got a lot of Docker Compose fans here. Um, the Compose spec makes it easy to be able to work with your existing Docker Composes. Here's a really simple one um, that now I have running in Podman Desktop. I can see it here. If I open up, we can see that we have now Doom running. Uh, as a WASM port in our browser, which is really fun to be able to spin up and spin down uh, Podman, uh, sorry, Compose instances just like that. Um, but what's really cool, now I want to show you, is that we can take multi-container applications, one or multiple containers, and turn that into a pod. Um, so I'll show you the process in order to podify this application. You'll notice that the Python port is exposed for our app. But we don't have the Redis port exposed. That's because in a, in a pod, they can talk to each other on localhost, just as we had in that entry point. So now we've got this pod running. We can see we've got the infer container, the Redis, and the Python containers running. Uh, and we can open this up. And uh, as containers have uh, restarted and are ephemeral, we can refresh the hit counter just like that. I also want to show you, so when we're working with pods, we can easily translate this to a Kubernetes environment. So with the extensions for Podman Desktop, I can really easily create a new kind cluster. Have any of us played around with kind, Kubernetes, and Docker? OK, sweet. So it's essentially a single node Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this one is version 1.27.3 inside of a container. And so just like that, Oh, that was a good timing. Um, we have a uh, little tiny Kubernetes cluster running uh, within Podman Desktop and within our system. You can do a kubectl, make sure everything looks good. Uh, and I'll go ahead and take this pod that we have here. I see that I have the Kubernetes manifest for it, right? Both of the containers and the configuration. And because I'm connected via my kube config right here, I can easily um, deploy this Kubernetes manifest to the local um, Kubernetes cluster. So you can see that the containers are creating. We have the logs. And we also created an ingress so that if we go back here, we can view. Um, so I'll do a kubectl get pods that the containers are running. And I could open this up. And this is the new application running in a local Kubernetes environment. I could do some testing here. And I could also, I'll show you one last thing. Uh, deploy it to the developer sandbox. Who here likes free Bitcoin? OK, what if I told you with the developer sandbox, you have your own free OpenShift cluster to, to mine Bitcoin? Well, unfortunately, it's not free Bitcoin mining, but it is a free OpenShift cluster. Uh, don't mine Bitcoin, but it's 30 days that you can use it. Uh, and what I can do is come back here to my pod in Podman. I can select the authentication to this new OpenShift cluster that I can use for free to test out my app, uh, deploy it, and also create the OpenShift routes uh, to access this uh, exposed uh, port for the pod. So I'll wait for the container to start. And we have a link for it right here so that I can open up this new application uh, and also view it in the topology here that we have this new pod running on OpenShift. Um, so this is the process going from image from uh, our source code to uh, containers. And the last thing I want to do is use another container to generate a QR code for that application that you can scan to learn more about Podman Desktop. So thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoy the experience and have a good conference.